Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how I did the edit on this picture using Photoshop. Um, please like and subscribe if you enjoy this video, if you find it helpful. Okay, so we're going to start by cutting out the background. I used a background eraser here. And it just cuts out the background like that. Next I uh, place a layer beneath that layer and fill it with black. And here I am decided to actually make it a dark grey. So you hold down your Alt key and your Backspace key and that fills that with dark grey. After changing black to the, to the grey, that is. So I do it a few times here. Picking up my lasso tool, I'll make a selection around one half. Right click, choose feather and feather by 200 pixels. Adjustments, brightness and contrast, and I draw the brightness down, making it darker. Now I'll repeat this a few times over the um, background image to try to get the light looking as though it's coming from the top left hand corner. So I take another selection with the same lasso tool. Um, right click and feather by 200 and then just draw that um, brightness down a little bit further now in the top left hand corner I do the opposite make a selection feather and then adjust the brightness to make it brighter You can notice when I cut out the background, it left some green in the hair. So what I do here is I make a layer above and, and change it to a clipping mask. Change it from normal to hue. And using the sample tool, I sample the color of the hair. And I just paint over that hair with a, a brush set at 100% opacity and flow. So you just paint over the green bits and you can see it, it paints them straight out. Right, so we go halfway around. I'll take another sample because it's a bit darker on this side. And I'll finish um, taking all the green out of her hair. Just highlighting both layers, I transform them both. Control T is the shortcut for that. And enter to commit the transformation. Now use curves to do some dodging and burning. Alright, so once I've made it darker, make sure your um, layer mask is highlighted. Control I inverts that layer mask, then hiding the darkness. And with white, the opacity and flow are around 25%. I paint back onto that layer mask and, and uh, allows me to paint shadows shadows in so I'll concentrate around the legs and, and the darker bits I'll put a bit of a shadow behind her where she's sitting on the seat and once I've done this I will do the same for the highlights I'll, um, I'll use another curves layer and brighten the image 
and then invert the layer mask using control I to make them black therefore hiding the brightness and uh, do the same as I'm doing here I'll paint with white on a black layer mask to, to, to bring highlights So it's um it's another way of dodging and burning. All right, so a new, new curves adjustment layer, and brighten the whole image. Shortcut is Control I to invert the layer mask. As you see, it takes away the brightness that we just put there. Then using a white brush, I can brighten up brighten up areas of the image that I, I want to be brighter. So obviously where the the light and the image is coming from. I'm just brightening the areas which are coming from the direction of the light. Okay, so you can see the, the difference that's made there. Okay, so now I'll create a new layer and I fill it with black. Then I change the layer style on this layer to color dodge. All right, so that'll make the black disappear, but it'll allow me to paint with a white brush at a low opacity just to brighten up some other areas which I want to add a bit more of reflection to, you know, a bit more brightness. So you still want to use um, low opacity and flow because this is pretty powerful when you can. I ever do it quite easily but then again you can always go back and paint with black as well and it'll darken it again so little bits of jewelry and things where you'd expect to see a reflection or a bit more brightness i'm just going to brighten those up a little bit make a selection around the model in the chair by um holding down the control key and left clicking on the layer with the model in it and that puts a selection around it and so it allows me to to brighten up the edges without actually affecting the background. All right, so when you've finished with your selection, Control D will deselect your selection. So it will be there in a sec. Control D, all right, so it takes away your selection. Now I'm going to um, do an inner shadow here. So inner shadow, putting the style, the um, the blend mode to color dodge, and a light color. So um, let's play around there. But the um, change the angle to an angle that uh, you want the light to be coming from, and you kind of eyeball it here. So with the um, distance and size. So there's a there's a little bright light to the, to the left of the image now on the edges use a polygonal lasso or polyg polygonal I think it's polygonal 
poly, poly, how do you say, pol polygonal tool. <laughs> and um, I make a selection here and I fill with white. So um, it's your alt key and your backspace to fill it with white. It's not that one, it's control and backspace depending on what your foreground and background colors are. So I've got white and black, so I want white. And I'm going to blur this with a motion blur. I want, I want to make this look like rays of light coming in through an imaginary window or some source that's up there. So I change the, um, the angle and the distance until I get something which is pretty close. And then I'll um, do a transformation on this and resize it all. So control T to do a free transform. When you're transforming, you hold down your shift key and drag on one corner. And then um, hit enter com to commit the transformation. And um, you can either reduce the opacity or I think in this case I change it to a soft light. Just to level it down a little bit. Now you want some dust. So I've got these stock images which I got from a, a place called B PSD Box. It's a great website. It can teach you a lot to do with Photoshop. Andre has um, these there for you to download if you're interested. Alright, so I transform, I flip it horizontally to have the dust coming from the left hand side of the screen. Press enter to commit the transformation. And with his logo at the bottom, I don't want that there, so I'm just going to paint with black over the top of that. And then we change this layer's layer style to screen, which will um, take away the black, leaving the dust hanging in the air. A quick transformation, Control T. There's some dust hanging in the air. Thank you, Andre, for that for that stock. All right, just going to reduce the opacity a little bit. I've learned a lot from Andre and his, uh, his website PSD box. I can't um, recommend it highly enough. Right, so I'm doing a color look up here. I choose candlelight cube and um, a soft light. So you can do a couple of things here. You could just reduce the opacity if you chose, but I um, actually apply this on the layer mask and it just adds a subtle bit of color to the highlights mostly. If you have a close look at that layer mask, uh, most of it's black, so there's just a few light lines where the highlights are, just slightly changing the, the color tone there. And then I finish with the camera raw filter. I finish most of my pictures these days with the camera raw filter, which can do a fair bit. But on this one, I think what I might do is just um, put the vibrant stuff and take down the, um, the color, the saturation. Add a bit of contrast, a bit of clarity, and then play with the, the levels with the lights and darks to get something which is um, pleasing to my eye. As I say, levels, curves. All right, so playing with the darks, the mid tones, and the, and the lights and the highlights. Then I finish off by adding a bit of a noise, some grain, 
and a vignette. And there we have it. Thank you for watching.